with the academic piece, we knew we were going to have students that were a little bit further behind. That I wasn't so worried about. We can catch up on that. But that social piece, like two years of being a human being and being kind, that's where I really noticed the struggle. And I noticed it in my classroom and I definitely saw it firsthand for what my son had to, to go through. Her son Emmett was bullied by a group of peers at school who he was trying to fit in with. I was having a really bad year and then it started going on social media too and one night I had like a really kind of like a anxiety attack when there was all these people against me and this one I was supposed to be like fighting some kid the next day that I'd never even met. As a parent, my job is to protect my child, and I watched my once vivacious, energetic, outgoing community leader, like he ran. Honestly, Emmett was the spearhead of the bottle drives that we did twice. He's a great kid, and I watched him slowly slide down into depression and anxiety, and you know, I'm hearing things about, you know, kids are telling him to go kill yourself. And I came home, you know, in March to a message on his whiteboard where he actually wrote, life might be better if I'm not here. So for a parent, like, absolutely heartbreaking because I was doing everything in my power, every phone call, every agency. Unfortunately, because of the influx of clients due to the pandemic, he was put on a wait list everywhere. When things hit rock bottom, Emmett was hospitalized for a week and finally got help through Reach Out Center for Kids. I could... I could say anything I needed to say, and they would listen and help me to process that stuff and help me come up with strategies to deal with certain situations and certain stuff that like I go through. This made me feel a lot like kind of like safer and less worried all the time and Absolutely, we've got greater need. You know, we don't come out of a global pandemic, pandemic without people needing to talk to someone and, and also without being in school for 18 months. I mean, kids were nowhere with their peers, they weren't with their friends, they were home. It's difficult to parent a child at the best of times. So Rock certainly saw an influx in greater need, but we were able to, to not miss a beat. We, we literally left our offices on the 13th of March, 2020 and opened up the next day. And we have put a hybrid model in place, we're virtual, we go to where the kids are. Uh, we've done all sorts of modifications to make sure that our programs are, are available to all the kids that need them and the families. But we've also been able to adjust the way we used to have, you know, to come to the office. We'll go to where they are. Or the kids can take service calls in their bedroom. It's important that we go to where the kids are. This year, instead of their annual bottle drive, the Neal family and Burlington dads are hosting a new event to fund the preventative programs at Rock. We're putting on the Honky Tonk at Uptown Social House on Friday, September 16th. Uh, doors open at 6. Tickets are $50. It includes a buffet. 50-50, a raffle, a silent auction. Um, Glenn's going to entertain us all night. So if I and my family can help prevent another family to have to go through what we had to go through, then, hey, we'll do fundraisers like this every year because it's so important. And these children are our future. And these children need to know that if they're hurting, there is help. Any other kids are kind of like going through what I went through. The people that aren't cool or the people that aren't kind to other people and like tease people and bully people because that's, that's, there's n no coolness to that. So just don't try and create an image of yourself that's not you. Just be yourself because then you'll end up becoming friends with people that like you for yourself and you won't have to go through what I had to go through. Reporting for Halton News, I'm Nikki Wesley.